Hey, so do you also want to create some nice looking cyberpunk in moments like this one? Under 15 minutes, then you can opt. What? We're flying to Philadelphia. Oh, hell no. That's the oh, way. hell no. Well, you cannot make it under 15 minutes, obviously, because it's going to take minimum of two, three hours. But I can teach you all the techniques and all the things used in making of this cyberpunk environments under 20 minutes. So just to make sure you watch this video till end and you're just going to learn a lot of new things. So let's dive into the video. Now, the first thing to do is obviously the modeling. And if you know even a bit about modeling, then good. And if not, do not worry because I'm going to teach you some basics of modeling so that you can at least create some basic structures which are used in this environment. So without any delay, let's move into the Blender window. Now let me teach you modeling real quick. Select the cube, press tab to go into edit mode. Now look here, here are three options with the vertex select, edge select and also the face select. The vertex select, you can select a vertex and move it or you can select multiple vertices and move it. Then we have, we got edge select, you can select any edge and move it. The face select, you can select any face and move it. Now we got extrude, simply select the face and press E. You can do it with either edges or either vertices. And shortcut to switch between vertex, edge and face select is 1, 2 or 3. Now we got insert, press I to insert and then you can extrude it and also you can E to extrude it, then scale to extrude it like this and then you can press E again to extrude. Now we got bevel. Bevel works nice with edges. Select any edge, control B to bevel it. You can also bevel the faces like this. And when you bevel, you can scroll up to increase the segments, which is going to make it look smoother. Now there is another interesting thing and that is booleans. And to do that in modifiers tab, we got booleans, but uh, it's a little lengthy process. So to make it easier, go to edit preferences, add-ons, go to our add-ons and then search for bool tool and just activate it and save preferences. Now, uh, let's say, let's create a cube. Now let's scale it like this and make it like this. And now what I will do is select this one, shift, select the object and press control and minus on your number pad. And now it's going to create something kind of this shape. Now you can modify your cutter object as you want. And also you can add some bevel modifier on the cutter object and it's gonna create some interesting shapes like this. Increase the segments and yeah, it's gonna work. And yes, modifiers are also very helpful. Like, let me show you, let's create a plane. Let's add a solidify modifier. What this does is when you increase the thickness, it's gonna create any, it's gonna turn any 2D object into a 3D one. And also you can apply a bevel modifier or also you can apply a, an array modifier. Array modifier just duplicates the thing. And let me teach you two more things that is loop cuts and extrude along normals. So like in edit mode, if I press control R, you will get something highlighted like this. And then when you left click, you can hover and select the placement and like if I want it here, I will just left click and it'll be applied. And now uh, le let's go to face select by pressing three, select this one, shift select all these. And now I will, if I press simply E, it's gonna be like this. So what I will do is press alt E and then extrude faces along normals. And yes, it works well. And now since we have learned modeling, let's implement those things that we just learned and let's make a real environment with it. Now in this whole process, I will be showing you the speed modeling, but do not worry. I will be explaining all the things and I won't be using anything new. Whatever I taught you just now, I'm just going to use these, those things only. So let's do this. I started with some rough block out of the surface as well as the base of the building and then I just created some cubes which I will later turn them into buildings. And I am also tweaking some lightings which you do not have to worry about right now because I will be telling you how to do the lighting later on. Now observe closely how I am making the support pillars or whatever you call it. 
I just created a loop cut and then I extruded both the si sides and now I'm just adjusting it few more extrudings and then beveling one side and as you can see with help of few extruding and some loop cuts I just made the whole pillars it was really simple and as I mentioned earlier I'm not using anything new I'm just using those things which we learned just few minutes ago So that was the end of the modeling part. Now it's time to move to the next and also a very crucial part called the lighting. Now let me show you how I did the lighting part. So for the lighting, let me show you the world setting first. So let's go to shader editor and let's go to world. And yes, here it's uh, so it's uh, just a simple sky setup. Like as you can see, there there's a sky right here. You can get these HDRIs from for free from Polyheaven websites like Polyheaven. And to use that HDRI here, what you have to do is go to Edit Preferences, turn on Node Wangler or Add-on, and save preferences. Now select this background node, press Control T, and it will be created click here and select the HDRI which you have downloaded and as it will be applied. So first of all, what I did was I just used a spotlight, this one. Uh, you can see the its settings here. It's like 3,12,500 watts of power, radius of 10 meters and spot size of 26.9 degrees. This spotlight is lighting this area, but right here, as you can see here, uh, there were some dark spots to and to lighten that up i used an area lighting this one i'm i'm not creating all those lightings again i'm just breaking it down for you uh, you can just easily create these by pressing shift a and go to light either points and spot or area I will, i'll be mainly using spotlights and area lights so this area light you can see its settings here then i also use another light this one to lighten up the ground and these ones are just as you can see i just had added a light here so this area lighting was just doing that lighting up this area mm. so yes th these three were the main lights these three you can see their positions and their angles and also let me show you the settings again this these and also these and rest of the lights were just to light some areas like uh, there was light here also so i added a spotlight and then this lighting was for the car as you can see here headlights of the car so yes that was all for the lighting setup now that is the end of lighting part now let's move to the most interesting as well as my favorite part called texturing so to start the texturing process Let's bring this up and let's go to shade editor. First, I will texture this thing. Now I will press new and now first you have to download some textures uh, and you can easily do that by going to websites like either Polyheaven or Ambient CG. So in this one, I just want this to be plaster texture. So what I will do is I will search here for plaster. Okay, I think this one, I like this one. This one should work or maybe this one. Let's use this one first. Let's download both. I'll go with the JPEG format. So now let's extract both of these and we are going to get some files like these inside it. Let's go back to Blender now. Let's go to edit preferences, add-ons and turn on node Wrangler add-on. Just check this and save 
preferences select this principal bsdf and press ctrl shift and t on your keyboard now navigate to the folder where you have saved the texture files so first i will use this plaster texture so press a to select everything and click this option easy uh, now it's applied but it's looking bad so to fix that let's press tab press a press u unwrap cube projection and now let's set this scale to something like two or maybe three yes i think three should, will work to fix the these uh, noise kind of thing uh, you have to go to this displacement and simply reduce the scale you can keep it like 0.2 or 3 and let's also reduce this normals like this much so now i will use the second texture which i have downloaded so let's add a mix shader node let's put it here let's add a mix color node this time and just put it here and let's bring it here release it search for principal bsdf now press ctrl shift t and let's go to the second texture that we downloaded select all do the same and yes uh, connect this displacement to this mix color node let's keep it like this and let's download another texture now this time i will go for this one let's download it let's put it here and let's duplicate it by pressing shift d and keep it here let's bring it here and let's add a principal bsdf again let's keep it here now let's select this principal bsdf again and let's press ctrl shift t and let's navigate to the third texture which we downloaded just now so yes let's duplicate this mix color node also let's keep it here and connect it to this displacement and just to reduce this displacement and let's kind of fix it now i will do some texture painting so to do that i will create a new image node image texture node and simply connect it to this mix shader as well as this mix of this one uh, not this one we have to connect it with this one let's press new name it mask or whatever you want let's multiply this value by two because we are going to use 2k textures and press new yes and as you can see that image is gone now to do the texture painting look carefully select this uh, node go from object mode to texture paint mode go go to tools uh, stroke increase you can increase the jitter and this uh, i just forgot to complete the uv and dropping process so let's open a uv editor right here press tab select all and now select all uv and let's click this pack islands yes now it should work fine now let's go to texture paint again make sure in this one this should be of same name this is the mask and this one's also the mask and now we can start painting remember now right now white color is selected so white's gonna make it visible and when you press x and switch it to black color you can erase it so yes this is how it works paint this much let's decrease the opacity let's increase the brush size by pressing f now let's paint it like this so this was the process which i have done to texture each building and if you want like a shutter here like it's gonna be a shop so let's make a shutter in this one so i will go to face select let's select this one let's press new new select the second material and press assign now a new material is created for this face so in this case i'm going to use this image so let's drag it here in this window let's connect it to base color and it's gonna be something like this to fix that I'll go to uv editor let's press tab keep this face selected and now here you can align this cube to this shutter like let's uh, keep this thing right here you can do the same thing to create a banner here you can just create a new material a sign and then you can replace it with some image texture i have shown you the texturing process of just one building but trust me 
That's how I textured all the other things in this scene. I just used different materials like for metal, I used normal metal and rust texture, mixed that up, did some texture painting and that's all. So I hope you can also texture all the other buildings. So now it's time to do the final thing and that is to add some details to the scene. So let's do this. So details are also very crucial part of any environment. You can see how it is looking without any details and now this is what it looks like with some details like as you can see i have added some generators here generator kind of stuff and also these things then these cables few more cables and many other things these crates these chairs and these ladders many things and i have also added this building this building is from kitbash i could have modeled one but i did not want it to uh, just a little lazy so i used kid bash uh, to get these type of props you you can visit websites like uh, sketchfab it's the most popular one uh, you can search here for p r o p s props and you will get a lot of results well you have to search for like street props and now yes as you can see there are plenty of things so you can download it and use it in your projects it's really simple and instead of this building you can use any other buildings like if you search here for building then there are plenty of results like you can use these these there are many and also let me show you my camera settings i am using a focal length of 25.5 millimeters and i have also used a little def depth of field and i've also put some ac vents here here and so yes, I think that is all for this video.